Welcome to the Power of Purity podcast, the show that empowers men to experience their sexual gift in a healthier way. Now here's your host, Tony Ingrassia. Hey guys, welcome back to the Power of Purity podcast. I'm really glad that you could be with me today. And I'm very, very excited about this episode because we have a very special guest today, Dina Alexander, with the website EducateEmpowerKids.org. And we're going to learn more about who she is and what she does. But let me just start by saying, hey, Dina, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, I'm really uh, excited and I've been looking forward to this interview And uh, before we kind of get into the website and exactly what you do, could you maybe just share just a little bit with us about uh, who you are, maybe a little bit of your personal life? Uh, Are you married? Do you have kids? Uh, What's your favorite hobby? Just anything that we should know about you. Sure, absolutely. So I am married. I have three kids. I grew up in the Los Angeles area, but now I am enjoying the great state of Texas. I have three awesome children that I just love to be with, and I would say that's probably the best thing that I love to do is to be with them. That's what's been hard about starting this new school year is I'm one of those weird moms that misses my kids when they are gone at school. Um, And everything I do, you know, even this organization was all started with inspiration to help my kids, to help their future partners and just as many parents as I could possibly help. But it was rooted in my kids, what could I do to just be the best mom and to help help them have the best life possible? Awesome. How old are your kids? I have a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 10-year-old. Wow. So you're pretty far down the path of motherhood and parenthood, so I'm sure you just have a whole lot of stuff to share. Absolutely. I'm, I am right in the thick of this topic that we're going to get into, that this is this is my life. I'm working on this. I'm dealing with this day to day. Yeah. And that's awesome, Dina, because what I think is, is, is neat is that the, the information and your heart to share this stuff, it, it isn't just born like in a clinical laboratory kind of setting, but it's born in the context of your own home, your own family, your own relationship with your kids, and your heart to just be an awesome mom. And so you're not just telling us what we should do, but you're telling us what you yourself are doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, li- I'm living this, you know, and I'm, my background is in therapy. I have my master's in recreation therapy, which is, you know, basically a group therapy degree where you use games and initiatives to get people to talk about their feelings versus just, say, sitting around in a circle and sharing an issue. And so I have that background, but that was, you know, not the main motivation for getting into this work. You know, the, the initial, you know, fire that I felt that was like lit within me was, you know, just reading an article one day. And when I realized, you know, the prevalence of porn use among children and teenagers, and it shocked me into action. And it made me realize I can't just sit back and let this continue. I cannot just, you know, and it's not enough for me to only protect my own children. I have to help as many children and parents as I possibly can. You know, when I realized that basically there's nobody left for my daughter, my daughter is the one that is 16, and there's probably no one left for my sons either that will not be tainted by, you know, the plague of pornography or, you know, addicted in some way, that that is what, you know, lit the fire in me that I was like, okay, I have to do something. I've, I've got to I've got to make a change here. That's awesome, Dina. And uh, it is scary. I mean, uh, the prevalence of this issue in our culture, uh, it's such a big deal, something that uh, everybody has uh, so much direct access to. And I understand uh, that teenagers are the single largest users of pornography today. Uh, The way I understand it, that each uh, successive uh, generation uses pornography more than the previous. So in other words, 50-year-old uh, guys watch porn more than 60-year-old guys, but th- uh, 40-year-old guys watch porn more than 50-year-old guys, 30-year-old guys more than 40, et cetera, et cetera, down to teenagers who are the single biggest consumers of pornography today. 
Yeah, absolutely. And we, you know, we have some of us that are, you know, say over 30, over 35, you know, we forget that these, that kids are, they were born their entire life with having instant access to the internet and many times unfiltered experiences online. We never had that. You know, I went, my freshman year in college was the first year I had access to the internet. And I remembered back in the day when we had a search that would pull up five or 10 results, not 23 million or 56 million results for a, a single search. Wow. You know, and I will tell my kids about that and how, you know, then, but their generation has been born into this fully accessible um generation and it has altered it has we it's had to alter our parenting and it's going to continue to shape our parenting continue to shape their lives as they spend more and more time online there's going to be more and more temptation and it's just more in their face you know we forget that there is an industry targeting us targeting our kids this is a very sophisticated industry the pornography industry this is not a mom and pop business out in the middle of nowhere that is struggling. This is a corporatized industry that interfaces with banks and cell phone companies and cable companies. It's run by people with MBAs and accounting degrees. These are people who their sole purpose is to make money and they will do anything to make money, even offer their business to, to children and teenagers. Wow. Yeah, where the money is, uh, that's where people go, and that's where power lies, and uh, it's big, big business without a doubt. Yep, absolutely. And that's why, again, you know, we even, you know, we we have a lot of efforts on our website. There's various coalitions that try to do work, but essentially, you know, I tell parents, I'm like, we are basically on our own. You know, there's ve- that is why I created the resources on my site is I felt like there was just not a lot out there. And so we have to be take that initiative continually to talk about these things with our kids, to lead those discussions, to not just wait for them to come and ask us and to not just wait when, for, when, when they have been exposed to pornography, but to start those conversations, even at a very young age, as soon as we start putting these internet enabled devices into our small children's hands, we have to have, start having simple, small conversations with them about online dangers. Absolutely. Need to be proactive about it. You know, uh, I'm, I'm 59 years old, and uh, just reflecting on what you were saying moments ago, back in my day and age, and I was exposed to a significant uh, level of pornography when I was a kid. I think when I was maybe ten, 9 or 10 years old, I don't remember exactly, uh-huh. but I was exposed to uh, stacks of pornographic magazines, Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler, etc. And, uh, you know, back in those days, if you wanted to see porn, you had to go uh, go buy a magazine, walk in a store and buy a magazine and it's just so different today, this issue of, of accessibility that you're talking about. Uh, virtually everybody knows that, that just at any time, one or two clicks away on my computer, on my smartphone, I can be looking at porn. And I think that's why it becomes a snare uh, to so many people and to kids because it's so accessible and it's right there at your fingertips. So your point is well taken. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I recently was speaking with... Um a re- somebody in recovery who's trying to work through his uh, pornography addiction. And he talked about, he was like, you know, when you have a heroin addiction or if you have, you know, a smoking addiction, you can get away from it completely. He's like, but it's like having, he's like, I feel like it's having a dealer in my back pocket. It's right in my phone. And it's so hard to get away from it. You know, he's like, I've put all these blocks. I have all these things on my phone, but it's right there. It's so accessible. You know, and you're right. Back in the day, we had to go far away or even like there was usually like, at least where I grew up in Los Angeles, there were parts of cities that were zoned where they would have adult, you know, bookstores, you know, and it was away from a residential area. You hardly ever saw them. They were not near the main shopping area even. And now, like you said, it's just so accessible and trying to help parents understand, you know, it's not, you know, what their kids are going to be exposed to. Because this was my misconception, you know, when I had smaller children and when I, before I got involved in this movement, was that even online, I thought, oh, it's just a few naked pictures. It's no big deal. People need to get over this. It's like, it's no big deal. And then as I started researching, 
researching this and getting into getting on, you know, and seeing what was on there. And I was, I was floored by the level of violence, the level of misogyny, the level of hatred toward women, the level of racism that is, that's just prolific in pornography and, you know, what they're allowed to get away with. Like you said, that is just two or three clicks away for our children is, is horrifying. And that, you know, that again is why we have got to start talking to our kids. That's awesome, Dina. So the website is educateempowerkids.org. And I just think it's totally awesome that you're uh, offering this information and these resources to empower and equip parents to, to help them deal with this issue with their kids. You know, uh, my ministry, I'm, I'm a licensed professional counselor and and I work with men and primarily adults uh, through my Power of Purity uh, podcast, my conference, my books. Uh, I'm, I'm dealing with adults. Uh, but the fact is, kids are exposed to this too. And, and we need wisdom and guidance on how to uh, manage this issue in a healthy way with our children. So thank God for, for you and your heart and what you're doing. I think it's totally awesome. So could you... Just share with us then a little bit about EducateEmpowerKids.org, uh, what it is, what you do, uh, kind of your heart, your vision uh, for, the, for this ministry. Thanks. Um, so we, like I said, so we started about three years ago. Um, and it's, it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, the, the people that you work with and, you know, where your ministry is. Um, most people assume that when I've gotten into this, they usually assume because so many people, people in this movement, they themselves are recovering um, addicts or their spouses are. And they're usually surprised to find out that I that I am not an addict or I have not been an addict or neither has my spouse, but that it was simply, you know, concern for my kids. And so that's why everything is so focused towards parents on our website. And so we offer, we have articles that come out a couple times a month, but really importantly, as we have on our resource page, we have free downloadable lessons where it should be a simple lesson because I don't feel like this should be a complicated, scary process. Our lessons on the website and our lessons in our books are you open up to a lesson, you look at it for five minutes and you give the lesson. Like it should be that simple. You know, we've broken them down into such simple topics that we want parents to feel like, like I want a parent to open my book and thumb through it and look through it and go, oh, I can do this. Oh, like it's really that easy. And I want to say, yes, it really is that easy to start these conversations. Um, so many of us have been, you know, socialized throughout our lives to think, oh, that a sex talk is awkward. A sex talk is embarrassing. A sex talk is shameful. And I say, no way. You know, this is going to be, this is, these are, you're getting ready to have an amazing experience with your kids. If you handle this the right way, which is, again, really not that difficult, you are going to get closer with your child. You are going to build a bond. You are letting them know, hey, I love you enough to talk about these topics and I am going to be open and honest with you. I am not going to judge or shame you. And your child is going to want to come back to you and have these conversations with you. Um, the website, we also just recently launched um, a Spanish page. There are very few resources out there for Spanish speakers. Um, and so that is something brand new. Um, one of our books is, is called How to Talk to Your Kids About Pornography. That has been translated into Spanish. Um, our other books are called 30 Days of Sex Talks, Empowering Your Child with Knowledge of Sexual Intimacy. And we broke that up a little bit differently in that we have one book for ages three to seven, another book for ages eight to 11, and then another book for 12 plus. Um, and all of them are very age appropriate. They start out super simple, you know, because again, people are usually like, what? I'm going to talk to a three-year-old or a four-year-old about sex. And I say, yes, but it's going to be so simple. You know, you're starting out with simple protective information, like what is the difference between public and private? What are the things we do in public and in private? Um, what is good touch, bad touch? What does it mean? You know, what is our, what is the purpose of our anatomy, our sexual anatomy? You know, what, you know, how can I say no? You know, when is it appropriate for a four and five-year-old to say no to an adult? Helping to empower our kids to realize, okay, wait, that's right. I'm in charge of my body and I am special and I am worth protecting. So again, we have 
just super simple dialogues. Um, we have a few videos on our website, but as of right now, those are mostly um, just like awareness, like for the, for the cause, but we are actually in the process right now of making helpful informational videos of how to start these conversations. So that is something that is like literally in the works right now that should be coming out in the next uh, couple months. That's awesome. I really uh, appreciate everything you're saying. I think it's uh, really awesome that you have broken this down into these age categories, uh, 30 days of sex talks for ages three to seven then 8 to 11 and 12 plus and just that the information is so user friendly that parents don't have to be intimidated or overwhelmed or feel insecure about can I do this how do I do this how do I talk to my kids and uh you've just put these resources within our reach which make it practical and easy and doable and uh, that just has to be so helpful. You know, one of the things that uh, I think is important, too, about what you're saying is that just this idea that it's, in my estimation, it's never too soon to start educating your kids and talking to them about these issues. I do a conference called the Power of Purity Conference, and I speak to groups of men about what it means to manage your sexual gift in a healthier way, what it means to bring your sexual gift under the authority of Christ, what it means to manage sex and be in control of sex instead of sex controlling you. And I often have uh, fathers or uncles or grandfathers ask me this question, well, is what is age appropriate? In other words, I have a son or I have a grandson He's 12, he's 10, he's, he's 13, he's 9 years old. Would, would it be appropriate to bring him? And I just always respond by saying, absolutely, yes, it's up to you and your judgment. But in my estimation, it is never too early to start teaching uh, these, these young boys about sexuality, healthy sexuality, and what God says about it. And one thing's for sure, and that is that if we are not teaching our kids about sexuality, healthy sexuality, and what God has to say about sex, you better believe that the culture is preaching its gospel of sex to our kids through TV, through billboards, through MTV, through commercials, through the internet. So they're getting exposed whether we like it or not. And so in my estimation, it's never too early to start. Yeah, absolutely. And then that's what, you know, all the content that you mentioned, I mean, that's what blows me away about when parents think that they can just have one talk and be done or that that they're going to wait till they're 12 or they're going to wait. They have all these reasons because, and it always comes down to they're scared. We have, you know, and so that's usually something we try to address a lot with parents is overcoming those fears, you know, because people have all sorts of excuses, you know, what it is. And always when we get, when it boils down to it, it's okay. They're scared to talk about this. And so, I always ask parents, you know, take a few minutes to examine why is, what are, what are you scared about? What is, what is your fear? Is it something that maybe has happened in your past? Is it something that, you know, which, or which, you know, or which issues are you afraid of? You know, are you afraid to talk about, you know, penis and vagina? And then I always say, you don't have to start in there. You know, you don't have to start with those topics. Start with the easy topics. Start with talking about what does a healthy relationship look like. Start with talking about, you know, how amazing and wonderful these bodies are that God created for us. You know, use the scriptures if that if you're comfortable. Talk about Adam and Eve. Talk about how they were made in the image of God. They have we have so many options. We don't have to go say right to the topics that we're intimidated of, but we have to start. You know, we have to protect our kids. We have to teach them when is it appropriate to say no to an adult. We have to start talking about what you know. Why is it that when we see certain sexual imagery, you know? In, you know, whether we're at the mall walking past Victoria's Secret or if it's something that pops up on television or in a magazine, talk about what is being sold to us. So that's something big that we have been talking about and we have a lesson on our website in the resource section is about media literacy. How do you read these images that are all around us? 
you know, because you're absolutely right. That gospel of sexuality, the world's version is definitely being sold to our kids and we have to help them make sense of it, you know, and help them make sense that they're not trying to create something beautiful or intimate or freeing or artistic even, that they are there, they're trying to sell us something. They're trying to make money and we have to help our kids see through that help them see through those lies so that they can understand what true intimacy is, what a true, loving, committed relationship looks like. And so when parents are fearful, I, you know, that's the, my first recommendation is start with the easy topics, right? Start with those things that you were comfortable with. And then you start working towards those topics that maybe you're intimidated of. Yeah, that's, that's so good, Dina. It, uh, I, I see in pictures sometimes, and just listening to you talk, the picture I'm seeing for some reason is uh, is a mason uh, building a brick wall. You know, if 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 uh, they were building a new house on your street and you walk by, and if you stop to watch the mason, he puts down the f- very first brick, and you're very unimpressed. So you think, well, that what's that? That's nothing. Then he puts a second brick, a third brick, just a few bricks. He's starting to pile up. You come back the next day, and there's more bricks, and and uh, as you watch this over days and a week or two, pretty soon a whole wall is emerging, and then you see it, and you say, oh, now I see there's a house. He's making a house. It's starting to take shape, and it, it feels like what you're talking about is almost like having a kind of relationship with your kids where you put these bricks down one after the other, after the other, after the other, just keep adding more and more bricks and it's it's going to take shape to our children and help them understand these valuable concepts about intimacy and sexuality that God intends. Absolutely. And that is that is absolutely key is that you are building a foundation. You know, when I go and I speak to parents at different conferences, I always say, you know, think of what do you what do you want in that big picture? You know, what do you want for that child who is 18, 19 year olds old leaving your home? What is that picture you're looking for? And then that is the goal when you start having these conversations. You know, sometimes we think about sex talks as being an isolated event or something that we're going to do one time or two times. And then right. it's not it's not part of the rest of our lives, but it is part of the rest of our lives. It's how we relate to other people. It's the respect that I expect for myself. It's the respect that I'm giving to other people. There very interrelated and we are creating those foundations and I always when I'm having these conversations with my kids I think well I want to create an environment in my home where my kids can ask me anything so how am I going to do that you know what are the words I'm going to use what is the tone how calm and pleasant am I going to be about talking about if I have if I believe that sex is amazing and beautiful and wonderful and a gift from God then absolutely that is going to be my tone when I am talking about it you know I often will say I don't remember what my mother said about sex I really don't but I remember that she was so positive about it even after my parents were divorced she was able to talk about sexuality in such a positive way that I knew, okay, this is something great, that this is something wonderful, and I could, I could relax about it, you know, and that I could ask her questions, and that she wasn't going to look at me funny, she wasn't going to question my question, she was just going to listen and answer as honestly and openly as possible. And so I, I go back to that over and over again, you know, what do I want? And that is also something that's been great. And it was, you know, the, the board, my board and a lot of the books that when we gave them out, you know, as samples and trying to get people's opinions, we gave the books to, you know, different parents and therapists to get their opinions when we were writing the book. And every single person came back to us with, I cannot believe the amazing discussions I have had with my kids. And I was like, exactly. That is the whole point. They couldn't, but they thought they were sitting down for a five to 10 minute discussion. And it was their kids that came back to them with amazing questions about intimacy, about love, about friendship, about healthy sexuality, and that they, those only fostered better relationships between parents and children. And that, that's my ultimate goal. Right. That's, that's great. It's intriguing to me, uh, this idea that, that this is so profoundly difficult for so many parents, but that based upon what you're saying in reality, if it's difficult and if there's a hang, somebody has a hang up, it's not the kid, it's the mom or the dad. 
that that is intimidated or kind of ashamed or insecure that that the reason it's so hard is because mom and dad make it hard because of the construct in our own mind and our own issues so it's almost like uh, i have to get in a healthy place with myself so that i'm prepared then to be healthy with my kid absolutely absolutely cuz i and i and i that's something that the more i've talked with parents like i said i feel like sev- there's a certain percentage that they think it's awkward because they were taught that it's awkward to talk about. But once you start talking about it, they're like, oh, I can do it, I can do it. And then there's another group of people that, yep, something happened to them. There is a lot of us that have had sexual abuse in our lives or we've made mistakes um, that we are ashamed of and we're, it makes it, you know, it kind of brings those past feelings close to the surface. And then once in a great while, you'll find parents who have once in a very, I mean, it's, it's pretty rare that you'll find a child who doesn't want to, who is like, who like wants to put their hands over their ears every once in a while. But, and I, for my advice for that child is you just keep, you just keep, don't, you keep working it. You just do it slowly. You do it calmly. You pick other topics that are related until that child is more comfortable and realizes, oh, okay, this is something I can talk about. But for the most part, it really is just our own hangups that we have to work on and think about, you know, critically like, okay, what is it that I'm really scared of? You know, am I afraid that my child, because we always hear about the curiosity myth, You know, I'm afraid I'm going to make my child more curious. And I just don't believe that. They are already curious. And curiosity is a good thing. That too is a gift from God. He wants us to be curious. He wants us to understand our bodies. He wants us to understand the world around us. And we have to help guide our kids in those discussions. Right. Um, I'm thinking of the old adage, you never get a second chance to make a first impression and one of the things I observed on your website that I really thought was awesome is you talk about how it's imperative that you as the parent are your child's first and best resource of information concerning sexuality. So it's, it's almost like, dude, you, you got one chance at this when your kids are young. Like this is your chance to start talking with them and influencing them and creating a frame of reference in their heads and their hearts about what sex is and what sexuality is and relationship and intimacy and love. And it's like, God forbid that we as parents would lose that opportunity to have that influence and that input when our, to, to be our child's first and best source of information. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I was a younger mom, I was taught you wait till your kids ask you a question. You know, you wait until they ask you about sex. And we say in our organization, it's, it's, it's no longer that time. We cannot afford to wait anymore because of what is out there, because of the exposure, because of the hypersexualized culture that we are living in. We don't have that luxury anymore for them to wait. You know, with my first, with my daughter, I, I waited until, you know, I was pregnant with my second child and there came the questions and we started some small discussions. But I say to parents, no, not anymore. We have got to take the initiative. Research shows that we believe the first source we hear. If I watch a story on CNN first and then I go to Fox News next, research shows that I am more likely to believe what I heard on CNN because that was the first source I heard. Mm -hmm. So we need to be that first source for our kids. Um, But having said that, there are tons of topics, you know, like in our books. I mean, we have 30 discussions in each of our books. And I guarantee if somebody gets the book, there is a discussion in here that they have forgotten or missed or didn't realize its importance. But it doesn't matter. It's never too late to start. Ideally, we're going to start with our kids when they're little, but it's never too late to start talking about healthy intimacy. You know, we can always, we can always, there's always something more to be said on it, you know. And it makes sense to me that, you know, if you, if you try to wait till your kid's 16 and and start talking or even 12 or 10, the longer you wait, maybe the, the more difficult it is, the more embarrassing it is, or a sense of insecurity But what I love about what you're doing here and the three different levels of books, the first book is how to talk to your kid between the ages of three and seven. So if we start them early enough and and 
we establish a kind of rapport with our children where they learn that it's okay to talk about stuff like this. It's safe. It's normal. It's healthy. It's appropriate. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Mom and dad are open. You can ask any questions. So they feel comfortable from the very beginning. Then they graduate to the second book. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we find it interesting that out of our books, our 12 plus book is the least selling of the three books. And it makes it makes us so sad because for us, this is where we have put so much meat into the discussions. I mean, this is where we have really talked about um, just our culture, you know, where we talk about shame and guilt, where we talk about, um, you know, what alcohol and sex combined does to us, where we talk about self-esteem and sex, where we talk more about abusive relationships, where we talk about consent. You know, we definitely talk about good touch, bad touch, and predators in the younger books, but we go into you know, a higher level of understanding in these 12 plus books. We also talk about a lot of positive things that I think parent, that kids need to know about, that it's not just no, no, no. And this is a, you know, we have to be careful and there's predators and, or if you're not careful, you're going to, you know, get a sexually transmitted disease. I mean, they're going to get that stuff in school. They're going to learn about birth control, STDs at school. They're not going to learn about intimacy. And this is where our focus has been on these books is that focus on intimacy and talking about what is, you know, like in the 12 plus book, talking about emotional intimacy and, you know, what are our expectations sometimes for that first time, you know, and talking about positive things like orgasm, you know, these are things that we tend to sweep under the rug and we're, you know, we're embarrassed and it's like, no, we need to talk, if we're going to talk about all the negative things out there having to do with sex, you know, like pornography or like predators, we've got to talk about the positive stuff. We've got to talk about the amazing parts of sex, how it builds closeness and how it helps, how it can be healing in a relationship. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, Dina. Uh, you know, 12 plus, I mean, that's the age, 12, 13, 14, 15. They're getting old enough now that you can really get down to it and start talking about uh, the real issues that they're being confronted with in the culture. And uh, it's time to talk, be able to talk to them very directly about these things. Hey guys, with that, I'm going to have to jump in here and interrupt our episode today with Dina Alexander with Educate and Empower Kids. And I'm sure you'll agree that this is an incredibly important discussion because of the reality of the porn-saturated culture in which we live, we just have to really be very sober-minded about the reality of what to teach our kids, how to speak to our kids, and how to help our kids grow up in a healthy way, a godly way, in view of the culture in which we're living. So please make sure that you come back for our next episode, where we'll continue this awesome discussion with Dina Alexander. And in the meantime, God bless you. Have an awesome day, and thanks for visiting the Power of Purity Podcast. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Visit powerofpurity.org for more resources and information. And if this podcast has been helpful or encouraging, please invite a friend to listen. Until next time, remember, there's power in purity.